Hey guys, Mr. Piercy here, and what we're going to be looking at in this video are going to be uh, properties of angles that are inscribed inside of a circle. Uh, now, in the last video, we talked about central angles of a circle where the vertex was at the center of the circle. Well, here, the difference between an inscribed angle and a central angle is an inscribed angle has its vertex on the circle itself, not so much at the center. And as you can see, uh, usually what we would do is we would kind of stop it right there and stop it right there. And you can see the uh, portion of the circle that's contained between the two sides of the, the two rays of the angle. Uh, that is what we, we would refer to as an intercepted arc. Uh, we're going to see some things that refer to an inscribed polygon and a circumscribed circle. Uh, something that's inscribed and something that's circumscribed those are old vocabulary terms that go back to when we were talking about uh, properties of circles when we were looking at uh, in centers and ortho centers and all that stuff. And we had to see, well, you know, an, an in center was the center of an inscribed circle and so on. So we've, we've seen those words before. Uh, the inscribed polygon that we're primarily going to be looking at is not so much a pentagon like what you see in the diagram, but really more quadrilaterals. Uh, so pause the video as you need to to fill in the uh, vocabulary portion of your notes. But uh, looking here, we're going to see, uh, well, how does the measurement of an inscribed angle compare to anything else inside of the circle? Now, if you haven't seen it yet, there's a demonstration video that I created for you so that you can see, well, why is this theorem uh, something that we see in the first place? And what we're looking at here is if I had... Uh, an angle, a central angle ACB, uh, it would have some measurement for this arc. Well, you can see that the two angles, angle C and angle D, they have the same intercepted arc. But the measurement of the inscribed angle is going to be half of the measurement of its central angle uh, relative. So whether we're looking at the measurement of the central angle uh, or whether I'm looking at the measurement of the arc AB, uh, I would say that the measurement of the inscribed angle is going to be half as much. Or conversely, I would say the measurement of the, of the intercepted arc would be double the measurement of its inscribed angle. Now, how are we going to use it? Uh, now, again, don't really pay too much attention to the solution stuff. We'll fill in the blanks here in a second. Find the measurement of angle S. Well, angle S is right here. I hope if I had my pen turned on. Here's angle S. We want to know what the measurement of it is. Well, angle S has an intercepted arc of arc RT, which is 60 degrees. Well, according to the theorem that we were just seeing, uh, the arc has to be twice as much as the inscribed angle. That would mean that angle S has to be half of that, which would be 30 degrees. Now, moving on, we're going to see that uh, the next question that they're asking us to kind of take a look at is what's the measurement of this arc here? What is the measurement of arc, uh, RQ? We want to know what's the measurement of this guy right here. Well, we don't get that directly. We can see that we do have uh, an inscribed angle, QRS, that has a measurement of 37 degrees. Well, that means it's intercepted arc. QS has to have an angle, or I'm sorry, arc measure of 74 degrees. So the difference between uh, 74 and 180 is what arc QR or arc RQ is going to be, because you can see RS is a diameter, so the arc that goes from R to S is 180. So the remaining here would be 180 minus the 74, uh, and that's how we're going to think our way through the problem. So now filling in the blanks here we can fill in the blanks with uh, the remaining information that we needed, and now we're ready to move on. Find the measure of an intercepted arc. Well, here what we're looking at, we want to know what is the measurement of you know, certain angles or arcs inside of a circle, similar to what we were just doing. What do you notice about the measurement of angle HGJ and HFJ? Well, here, we're looking about uh, find the measurement of arc HJ. So I want to know, first of all, what is this? Well, it has uh, an inscribed angle right here of 39 degrees, so I would just say, well, let's double that, and that's going to be uh, 78 degrees. Well, what about the measurement of angle H, 
gj. Well, that one here, hgj is this one right here. But they both intercept the same arc. So if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then the inscribed angles themselves have to have the same measurements. So what do I notice about the two angles, hgj and hfi? Well, they have the same measurement, therefore they must be congruent to each other. So that's what we're kind of looking at as far as filling in our blanks here. Now this one also here, uh, this is kind of what we were just looking at a second ago. Uh, angles, inscribed angles that intercept uh, the same arc uh, have to be congruent to each other. So whatever the measure measure of angle D and C is, whatever that measurement is, they're the same. And because they intercept the same arc here, then that means the measurement of arc AB has to be the same. So I could also give you kind of a diagram that looked like this. If I just had a circle and then I went this, I pick another color. like this well because and let's say that this is uh, is arc a B and let's say it was 50 degrees well then that would mean that this angle here had to be 25 and this angle here had to be 25 because they intercept the same arc and so they would have to be congruent to each other so keeping that in mind here name two pairs of congruent angles inside of the figure. Now there's more than one way that we could answer this depending on what arc are we looking at. So let's just pick an arc and see what happens. So let's go here. Let's look at arc uh, PQ. Well the angles that intercept the arc PQ are this angle here at S and this angle here at R. So those two angles would have to be congruent to each other. I could very easily kind of turn it around now I'm looking at this arc here, RS. Well, this angle intercepts the arc, and this angle intercepts the arc. So those two angles, P and Q, also have to be congruent to each other They would, because they intercept the same arc. So there's more than one uh, pair of angles that we can look at here. But uh, these are just uh, because it's specifying. It says, notice QRP. Well, if I'm looking at QRP, I have to look at angle PSQ as well, because those are the angles that intercept the same arc. But there's definitely more than one pair that we can identify in that diagram. Now, at this point, go ahead and uh, pause the video and answer these three questions. And when you're ready, uh, hit play so you can compare your answers against mine. All right. So hopefully we have some good answers here for uh, the three measurements uh, that we're looking at. Find the measurement of angle GHJ in the first one. Well, we want to know what is the measurement of the angle that's right here. Well, according to what we were seeing, the measurement of an inscribed angle is going to be half of its intercepted arc. So half of, pardon me, half of 100 would make the measurement of the inscribed angle 50. And the converse is what we're seeing here in uh, figure two. We have the measurement of an inscribed angle, and we want to know what's the measurement of its intercepted arc. So I doubled the arc, or I doubled the inscribed angle to get the measurement of the arc. So here we get 80 degrees. Find the measurement of angle RTS. Well, we can see in the diagram uh, the given angle at Q intercepts arc RS here. Uh, so the other angle that intercepts the same arc is here RTS. So because the two angles intercept the same arc, they have to be congruent to each other, so 31 degrees. Now here, this is another demonstration video that I showed or that I created. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to go back and take a look at it. Here we're looking specifically about if I have uh, an angle inscribed inside of a semicircle. Well, if I have an angle inscribed inside of a semicircle, it doesn't matter where the vertex of the angle is along the semicircle, it will form a right angle, which kind of makes sense because if if the measurement of an inscribed angle is half of its arc, well in this case the arc AC 
is 180 degrees. So its inscribed angle has to be half of that, which makes it 90. Uh, so as long as we have a circle that's inscribed, I'm sorry, as long as we have a, an, in, uh, an inscribed angle of a semicircle, we can conclude that it is going to be a uh, right angle. Now here, this is actually a really, really good question uh, that talks about the property of that last thing that we were just looking at. Uh, this is a very good kind of thinking question that makes you say that, well, if you can really answer this type of question, then you you really have integrated and understand uh, the properties of the inscribed angles that we're talking about. So the setup is, is that we have a security camera that is able to rotate uh, 90 degrees. So it goes maybe 45 degrees to the left, 45 degrees to the right overall. It has an arc that it covers of 90 degrees. Well, somewhere along this wall, uh, I don't know, it has to be able to see that whole wall right there. And so where can we place the camera in order to be able to still see the entire wall? Well, if we look at this uh, wall here as, say, the uh, diameter of a circle, then according to the uh, last theorem that we were seeing, that anywhere along the uh, semicircle itself, uh, I could place the camera and it'll still rotate 90 degrees and you can still see the whole wall because again, the wall is acting kind of as a uh, semicircle. And that's really kind of what we're looking at on this one. So I really, really do like this kind of question because it is very much a thinking question. And I'm looking, I thought I had another diagram here that I made for this, but I guess that's not, I guess I don't. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. So here's our, you know, this is where like the center of the circle would be. So it would kind of keep coming out like that. And uh, so anywhere along this semicircle, I could place the camera and it would still form a right angle and cover the entire diameter. Now this is the last theorem that we're going to be looking at of anything kind of inscribed inside of the circle uh, for the time being. Uh, so again, at the beginning, we saw the inscribed polygon. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at inscribed quadrilaterals. Uh, what we're looking at here is we have a quadrilateral that's inside of a circle and uh, its angle measurements have certain characteristics. Again, there's a demonstration video that I created that kind of walks you through why this thing works. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to go back and take a look at it. But what we're recognizing is that the angles uh, that are opposite of each other inside of a uh, cyclic quadrilateral, these angles are going to be supplementary to each other. So it's different than what we've seen uh, for a lot of other things figures that we've seen where we look at same side angles being supplementary to each other. Now we're looking at opposite angles being supplementary uh, rather than say congruent in a parallelogram or something like that. Uh, it's a very easy thing that students mix up. So please make sure you uh, understand for a quadrilateral inside of a circle, we're referring to the opposite angles being supplementary to each other, not the same side angles. So now that we understand that the angles opposite of each other are supplementary to each other, well, how can we find the measurements of, say, missing angles inside of a figure? Uh, looking at these, the algebra associated with them isn't terribly uh, challenging. It's just meant to kind of illustrate the idea that the angles opposite of each other uh, are supplementary. Uh, so here, if I want to find out the measurement of angle Y in figure A, well, the two angles, P and R, are 180. So if angle 1 or angle P is 100, then the other angle has to be 80 to get the sum of 180. Uh, looking here, it, to find it in the same circle, uh, circle A, Q and S are uh, supplementary. So if angle Q is 88, then that makes the other angle 92 degrees. Same idea with the other circle. We're still saying that the opposite angles are supplementary to each other. So we're going to be able to say that 8x and 4x are equal to 180. Solving for x in this case gives me 15. The other one, 3y plus 3y, uh, those are supplementary. So solving for y in this case gives me 30. And I would be able to conclude that the quadrilateral in figure b is a kite uh, because this angle here and this angle here are congruent to each other. 
uh, that would be enough information for me to be able to conclude really that the quadrilateral here is a kite. Not that you need to know that, but just saying. All right. So again, at this point, go ahead and pause the video and answer the two questions that you see. And when you're ready, go ahead and hit play. See how your answers look with mine. Okay. So a right triangle is inscribed inside of a circle. The radius of the circle is 5.6. What is the length of the hypotenuse of the right triangle? Well, this is going off the idea that a circle inscribed inside of a, or I'm sorry, an angle inscribed inside of a semicircle is uh, going to be uh, a 90 degree angle. So that's where we're getting the right triangle from. Uh, so since the radius of the circle is 5.6, the diameter would have to be double that, 11.2. So that would be the hypotenuse of the right triangle that we would see. Find the values of A and B. So again, keep in mind that the angles opposite of each other are supplementary. So angle A, angle A and angle C are complementary, or I'm sorry, supplementary, not complementary. So I would say 5A plus 90 is equal to 180 and solve for A that way. Or the other one, I would say 4B plus 96 is equal to 90 and solving for a and b i get 18 and 21 respectively so that's it for uh, properties of inscribed angles where we're saying that the measurement of an inscribed angle is going to be half of the measurement of its intercepted arc uh, inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are of course uh, congruent to each other that if i have an angle inside of a semicircle, an inscribed angle of a semicircle, that will form a 90 degree angle, making it a right angle. And a quadrilateral that is inscribed inside of a circle uh, has the properties of the fact that the angles opposite of each other will be supplementary. That's it for today's lesson, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions about anything you've seen, by all means, let me know. I'll be happy to help you out. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching and take care.